All right, ready to have our minds blown today. We're diving into a topic that's, well, kind of electrifying. Get ready to explore the brain on EMFs. EMFs, yeah, those invisible fields coming from anything electronic. They're everywhere these days. And this research review you sent from Brain Research Bulletin, hot off the presses this year, suggests they might be rewiring our brains in ways we never even considered. It's kind of freaky to think something invisible could be messing with our brains like that, right? It really is. And one of the biggest misconceptions is that it's just about heat, like our phones getting warm in our hands. But it goes way beyond simple heating effects. EMFs can actually set off this whole cascade of biological processes inside our brains, even affecting things like our genes. Okay, now you're talking about stuff that makes my brain feel a little fried. How do we even start to unpack something this complex? Well, this 2024 review starts at the most basic level the cells that make up our brains. And it shows how different types of EMFs, meaning different frequencies, and whether they're pulsed or continuous, can have really different effects on things like neurogenesis. Neuro what now? Sorry, some of us haven't taken a neurobiology class lately. Right, of course. Right. Neurogenesis is basically your brain's way of making new brain cells, neurons specifically. We used to think this only happened when we were kids, but now we know it keeps going throughout life, especially in a region called the hippocampus, which is like mission control for learning and memory. So new brain cells, that's got to be good, right? Are you saying EMFs could be like a brain booster? Well, not so fast. Some studies suggest that low-frequency EMFs might actually encourage neurogenesis. Actually, there's this one study mentioned in the review where older mice, after being exposed to a specific type of EMF, showed improvements in their memory. But it's not a sure thing, and we got to be careful about jumping to conclusions. Okay, so maybe hold off on selling EMFs as the next miracle brain pill. But it does make you wonder, what else are these EMFs up to in there? That's the million-dollar question, right? This research review dives into a whole bunch of possibilities. For example, remember we were talking about cells? Well, EMFs even seem to affect apoptosis, which is like your brain's natural cleanup crew, getting rid of old cells to make room for new ones. Apoptosis? That doesn't sound nearly as positive as growing new brain cells. It's not as bad as it sounds. Apoptosis is totally natural and actually essential for a healthy brain. Problem is EMFs seem to interfere with it, and too much or too little apoptosis can create a whole bunch of problems. Oh no, not another thing EMFs are messing with. But how do they even do that? Seems like EMFs could be flipping switches in our cells, turning certain genes on or off, which then affects apoptosis. And get this, the review even looks into EMFs potentially affecting our epigenome, which is like the software running the show for our genes. Whoa, epigenome, that sounds serious. So EMFs aren't happy with just messing with our brain cells. They want to rewrite the code our brains run on. It's a bit like that. The epigenome is incredibly complex, and we don't fully understand it yet, but we do know that changes to the epigenome can stick around for a long time and even get passed down to future generations. Okay, now we're officially in mind-blowing territory. EMFs potentially impacting not just our brains, but future generations too? Hmm, this is heavy stuff. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's go back to those genes for a minute. What does it actually mean for EMFs to be flipping switches on our genes. How does that impact how our brains work? Well, think of genes like blueprints for how our bodies work. And the epigenome is like the contractor deciding which parts of the blueprint to follow and when, you know. It all comes down to gene expression, which genes are on or off, and that can impact everything from how our brains develop to how they function day to day. Okay, so it's not just about having the right genes, but making sure the right ones are actually doing their thing. But what does that look like in real life? Give me an example. Sure. Let's take the gene that helps make dopamine, for example. Dopamine. That's that reward chemical, right? The one that makes us feel good. Exactly. Dopamine is key for motivation, reward, pleasure, but it also plays a big role in learning and memory. Okay, so dopamine, it's kind of a big deal for our brains. What happens if EMFs are messing with that? That's what researchers are trying to figure out. And the findings are, well, honestly, a bit concerning. Several studies in this review show that exposure to EMFs can actually change dopamine levels in the brain, and not always in a good way. Wait, so you're saying EMFs could be messing with our brain's reward system, like making us crave our phones even more. It's a possibility. Think about it. We get a little dopamine rush every time we check our phones, see a notification, or scroll through social media. It's like a mini reward that keeps us coming back for more. If EMFs are messing with our dopamine balance, it can make it even harder to put those devices down. Okay, that's pretty unsettling. But dopamine isn't the only chemical messenger in our brains, right? 
what about all those other neurotransmitters we hear about? You're right. Dopamine is just one piece of the puzzle. EMFs can potentially impact a whole bunch of neurotransmitters, each with their own job in the brain. For instance, acetylcholine, that's essential for learning and memory. Then there's serotonin, which plays a big role in mood, and GABA, which helps keep our brain activity in check. All of these chemical messengers work together in this delicate balance to keep our brains working right. So EMFs could be throwing off that whole delicate balance. Yikes. And it seems like the developing brain might be especially vulnerable here, right? The review mentioned something about prenatal exposure. Yeah, that's another area where we need a lot more research. Mm -hmm. There are studies showing that when pregnant animals are exposed to EMFs, it can potentially impact brain development in their offspring. But we're still a long way from understanding the full impact on humans. Okay, so more to uncover there. But let's zoom out a bit from all the cellular details. We've talked a lot about what might be happening at the microscopic level, but what about the bigger picture? How do these EMF-induced changes in the brain actually translate into changes in how we think, feel, and behave? So we've gone pretty deep into how EMFs might be messing with our brains on a cellular level, even potentially those crucial chemical messengers and maybe our genes. But how does all that translate into, you know, real life? What does it mean for how we think, feel, act in the world? That's the million dollar question, right? And to be honest, that's where it gets even more complicated. We're still really early in our understanding of the full range of EMF effects on like human behavior and thinking. OK, so no easy answers there. But this research we've been talking about does highlight some pretty interesting findings, right? What are some of the things researchers are seeing in terms of those behavioral impacts? Well, remember, we were talking about EMFs potentially affecting dopamine. Well, there are studies suggesting that a lot of EMF exposure could be linked to things like trouble concentrating, being more impulsive, even problems sleeping. Yeah, those are definitely things most of us can relate to, especially these days when everyone's constantly plugged in. It's easy to forget that our brains haven't really evolved to deal with this much digital stimulation, right? Absolutely. And that's why this research is so important. We're just surrounded by devices emitting EMFs. And it's only recently that we've really begun to look into the potential long-term effects, you know? So where does that leave us? We've uncovered some pretty wild possibilities today, but there's still so much we don't know. What's the takeaway for our listeners who are probably feeling like their brains are a little fried right now? Honestly, I think the most important thing is awareness. Just knowing that EMFs can potentially influence our brain activity at such a basic level, that's a huge first step. Knowledge is power, right? Exactly. And while we wait for more research to give us concrete answers, there are things we can do to be proactive, you know? Like what? Spill the beans. What are some practical steps we can take to minimize the potential risks, even with all this uncertainty? Well, it's really about finding a balance. No one's saying ditch all your devices, but being mindful of how much you use them is key. Taking breaks from screens, having tech-free zones in your home like the bedroom, and even looking into things like EMF shielding products for your devices, those could all be helpful. So small steps to protect our brains in a world that's gone wireless sounds doable. Definitely. And keep in mind, everybody's different. What works for one person might not work for another. It's all about paying attention to how you feel and adjusting things as needed. That's such a good point. We talk about this all the time on the show, this idea of individual sensitivity. Just like with, I don't know, food or medicine, our brains might react differently to things like EMFs. Exactly. And as we learn more about those individual differences, we can start to figure out how to use technology in a way that works for each of us and supports both our mental and physical health. Well said. It's definitely a lot to wrap our heads around, but I'm walking away from this deep dive feeling empowered, not overwhelmed, and hopefully our listeners are too. Any last thoughts before we sign off? Just this, if something like EMFs, something we can't even see, can have such a huge impact on something as complex as the human brain, what other hidden things are shaping our thoughts, emotions, and actions? It's a question worth thinking about as we navigate this increasingly complex and interconnected world, you know? What a thought to leave us with. Seems like we've stumbled onto a mystery that goes way beyond EMFs. Who knows? Maybe we'll dive into that another time. But until then, thanks for joining us on this electrifying trip into the brain. We'll catch you next time for another deep dive into the mysteries of science and what it means to be human.